All right, good morning. Hi, Linda. It's funny, I had Robin Williams' voice in my head all morning, so you and I are on the same uh, wavelength here. All right, I got my heater turned off here, so hopefully everybody can start hearing me. Uh, gonna wait a second, I know I'm a couple minutes early. It is Monday. Uh, there's no one in the office yet, it's so quiet. It's really weird when it's quiet here. Um, everybody starts getting here at 9 a.m. And so in the next half hour or so, people are going to just start storming in, singing and laughing, and it's going to be chaos. All right. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Tina. Thank you for joining me so early. I know it's not super early for everyone. It's pretty early here. Um, 8 a.m. is pretty early for me. Oh, good morning. All right, so today is not super structured. Um, I have a bunch of tips and things that I'd like to go over that I think you'll really enjoy. Um, but if you have questions, feel free to shout them out as you, um, as you watch. Um, <laughs> I love when it's quiet here. Yes. Um, good morning, Sherry. All right, and I have my coffee, right? I don't know if you guys could tell on that last live, I was having a hard time breathing. I'm gonna bring my beverage with me. I had to cough so bad. Oh. <laughs> Tina's been up a while. Good morning, Mary. All right. Looks like people are all starting to join. We're right on time now. Um, today, we're gonna to be talking about optimizing your layout. And so what that means for me is making something that say, us or another planner company um, provides you work within your life. And I have some tips, things that I've done over the years, because even though we design, um, basically for me, we design things that I'm going to enjoy, sometimes they're still not perfect. I can't put everything that I would like on our planner pages either. And so sometimes I have to customize them also. And so I have a lot of tips um, on how to do that for you. Good morning, Libby. All right. So hopefully um, you bear with me if I make any mistakes today. This is a different structure. You're here in my office. Um, and uh, I got my big whiteboard over here, very visual person. So there's always doodles and drawings and charts up there. I just wiped it clean. So, you know, it looks like I'm organized. Mm, good morning, Celia. It's weird to be alone with you guys. No one's here. All right. So welcome everyone. This is our very first master plan Monday. And like I said, today we're gonna to be going over um, how to optimize your layout. Um, if you're watching us and you're new, please put hashtag new. Um, even if you're on the replay, I like to see how many new people are joining us. Um, if you're new to Jane's Agenda, my name is Jane. I'm the CEO and founder of janesagenda.com. We make planners that actually work. Um, and let's see, so. Uh, on a scale of one, I love that floral, those are my curtains, <laughs> the floral in the background, those are my curtains. Um, I have big glass doors all the way around, kind of like a fishbowl, and uh, so I have curtains so I can close it off and get some privacy when I want to focus. Um, so on a scale of one to five, tell me how prepared you feel with your planner this week going into Monday. It's Monday at 8 a.m. for me, um, and so on a scale of one to five, how prepared being one total chaos and five ridiculously prepared and you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and that way I can see where we're starting. Go Sherry. Sherry's got a five. Linda's got a three. All right. We've got lots of threes and fours coming through. That's pretty good. I mean, I'll take a three. <laughs> Celia's got a two. Well, hopefully after today, you'll, we'll bump you up to at least a three. Herlene's got a five. I believe that about you, Herlene. All right. Cool. All right. So, <laughs> 4.5. I like that. Okay. So, when you go into Monday morning, ideally, you're feeling really, really prepared. You know exactly what you're supposed to do. I want to say I'm at a four personally going into today because I had a lot of personal life this weekend. I had a lot of laundry and things, so I didn't get to fill out my planner as thoroughly as I'd like. But after we get off the call, I'll go through and I'll spend a couple minutes and then I'll be at a five. And that's the goal every Monday. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> That's why I'm here. Yes, 100%. Okay, so some of this is going to be really basic for some of you. Some of this is going to be um, things you never thought of. So just bear with me. As we go through, I'll make sure that I have a good mix of tips for whether you're a brand new planner person or you've been doing this for 20 years. Um, and so hopefully you get something out of it either way. Um, let's see. So we're going to start with the different layouts. Everyone knows the basic layouts um, that we have monthly, weekly, and daily are specifically what we're going to be talking about today. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about ways that I use each one and how I use all three together. Um, and so if you have tips that I don't think of, feel free to throw those in the comments too. We're a team here. So that means that if you have anything that you can help other people with, feel free to sh shout it out. Good morning, Sandra. All right, so I believe the that monthly calendars are for everyone. Everyone should have a monthly calendar. Now, what kind of monthly calendar? That is 100% up to you. You need to figure out what your life demands. But I highly recommend a two-page monthly calendar where all you have is your month spread. Um, I'm currently using the, let me see if I can find one to show you. I'm currently using the lined monthly. It's, um, yeah, that's good enough. All right, so this is the one, and hopefully you guys can see better today. I have tested the lighting. Um, I'm using the Lined Monthly, but a two-page layout like this, I think, is ideal for everyone. No matter how busy or not busy you are, I think that this is the perfect layout. Um, and I say that because I want to see only this month. Um, and so the way that I use my monthly is for things that are coming up in the future. I do not use it for things that are coming up today uh, because I have my weekly and daily. If you are not busy, if you have very few things going on, you might be able to get by with just a monthly calendar. Um, that doesn't work for me. I have to use all three. Um, so the way that I fill out my monthly is I put the things that happen that month that I don't want to forget. So things like that for me are bills that are not on auto pay. I don't write anything down that comes out automatically because that's just chaos in my brain and I don't need that. Um, and then on my calendar, I'll write down First, I always write down birthdays and anniversaries and um, things that matter to the people I love. Those are the things I write down first. And around that, I'll write deadlines or events. Um, if we're having a sale, I'll write that down. Um, basic stuff. This is not like fine-tuning tasks. This is your, your overview of what you need to know. I almost never write times on my monthly calendar either. Uh, so that's something that, that I don't need that space for. I'll put that later but I might write like I have a meeting that day. It's just so I remember what day that is. That's it, that's the whole goal of my monthly. And I keep um, at least the next year in my calendar, in my planner. Um, and um, I just try to schedule around, around those big things, those big rocks. Good morning, Susie. Um, so I like to layer my calendars and what does that mean? So after my monthly, I have my weekly. I always have a weekly, even if I have a daily. It's one of those things that I think you should have a weekly. If you have that level of busy where you need something bigger than a monthly, you need a weekly. And so I always have my weekly calendar. Weekly is for more fine tuning. Um, Celia, I use that one for both base, my basic type calendar stuff plus a separate one page monthly in my finance section for bills. Very good. Yes, you can have multiple monthlies. Um, that kind of overview of when things are happening, what day. That's what your monthly is for. Um, and then your weekly is for more fine tuning. That's where I'll put all of my appointments. It'll put, I'll put my um, actual times the appointments are. And um, then on my daily, I'll actually put all of my tasks. So let's say Let's say that you are, are super ridiculously busy. I still think you need a weekly and a daily. This is why all of our new dailies are coming with weeklies included. The, um, the new daily 13 has a weekly on the front. And we're going to go over a little bit more about how I use each thing and some ideas that I have for you to customize the layouts. Um, but since we're just getting started, it's still a little early. And um, so whether you're super busy or not, you want to layer them in. And I, and I really think that that's important. So let's say... Um, Let's say I have a doctor's appointment next October, right? Sometimes you have things really far ahead. I'll write that on my planner. I'll write October, you know, 12th, whatever doctor's appointment. I know that when I get closer to that appointment, they're going to confirm with me 
usually a month out. And so I don't really worry so much about the time. I just want to remember what day so that when I'm looking ahead, I'm going, when was that doctor's appointment? I can flip and find it. Um, I also write tasks on my monthly calendars, things that are uh, really important to do that month that I don't want to forget. Maybe it's like paying my auto registration or um, every August I design my mom's planner, right? So I'll write that down on my monthly. These are not really tiny tasks. They're more like projects, if you think of them that way. Um, Sherry, I'm using the, uh, it's aligned two-page monthly. Um, I don't know if they, the monthly numbers are still on the website, but this is monthly number 35 because I use a Monday start. Monthly number 36 is the Sunday version. I have aligned monthly. Um, my brain really likes the structure of the lined boxes. All right, so then on your weekly, like I said, if you're you're getting there, um, all right, I got sidetracked, sorry. So let's say you have this doctor's appointment, you've known about it all year and you go up to it, you have um, the month comes up, October. That's when I move all of my big rocks from my monthly to my weeklies. I do it one month at a time. So the usually the Sunday before the month starts, sometimes that's a few days, sometimes that's almost a week. Um, I'll go through and I'll take my monthly calendar and I'll actually pull it out of my planner and I'll move all of my big rock appointments to my weekly pages and I'll put them in and I'll put them in the times where they are. Um, I'll put my tasks scheduled. Uh, my monthly is just there for future planning. I might fill it out for memory purposes. Like if I want to remember, um, you know, someone, someone had a birthday and I forgot about it, I'll write it down. And I do that for a different purpose. But for the most part, my monthly calendar is just for future planning. And then so on my weekly, um, I take my weekly and I fill out the two weeks at a time thoroughly. And we're talking like, Every task I can think of that has to be done each day, there are some things that have to be done on Mondays. There are some things that have to be done on Thursdays. I'll go ahead and fill those out. And I do that two weeks at a time. So I'll do, um, like I just filled out, not this week, but next week, yesterday. And that way I can always have up ahead future things. Um, I never forget, like on Friday, on Friday, if you come up to Friday and all of a sudden you have a really big deal, something coming up on Monday, you want to know that more than three days ahead. How far ahead do you plan on monthlies? As many months, as far ahead as I have in my planner. So if I have a whole year, I'm planning the whole year ahead in my monthlies. Um, now I write an erasable pen. I highly recommend you use erasable pen or pencil because life changes. Um, I don't like sticky notes. So even though you can use sticky notes, um, I just am not a fan because if you lose one sticky note, you've just lost that whole appointment and no thank you. Um, but I do, I plan the whole year ahead. I have, um, I think I have only through June right now, which is really not good for me. I'm gonna grab more, but like you can see, I have June next year and there's stuff written down on there. Um, so um, when I plan my two weeks in a, in a ahead, I do that on my weekly and I plan out all of my big projects and tasks. And then I funnel that down to my daily. So I only fill out my dailies um, the day of thoroughly, but up until then I plan one week ahead. So let's say, um, Sunday here yesterday, I made sure I had my, my weekly has already been filled out for the last two weeks. Um, but I filled out my dailies for this week and then I just put the big tasks. I don't, um, I don't fill out all the fine stuff because that's going to happen naturally as I go through. And if there's anything that's due uh, for the week, but it doesn't have an exact day, I always write that on Monday because I migrate my tasks throughout the week. So if I don't get it done on Monday, it'll move to Tuesday naturally. Do you write future monthly tasks on a certain date or in the notes column? So most of our monthlies have, um, have a task list space and I'll write, um, like this one's pretty blank. There we go. Oh, I'll write the task and then I'll write, um, I'll write the, sorry, I'm reversed. There we go. Um, I'll write the due date down next to it so that I know what date is. So like, say I have to pay my American Express. I'll write down American Express and then the date it's due right there. And that's how I fill out the tasks for my monthly. Um, and like I said, I don't put little tiny tasks. I'm not going to put that I need to empty the dishwasher, stuff like that on my monthly. That would be silly. Um, those are for my daily. 
Um, and you kind of see the difference. If it's something that is a bigger project, I'll write that down. Like we may have um, in June, we'll be shipping the July box. So the August box needs to be designed, right? So I might write down design August box, um, but I'm not gonna write down the 15 items or whatever we put in it and all of the different little details. Those are gonna go on my weekly. So hopefully that helps a little bit with understanding why to use different things and how to layer them. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the way that I, I work my tasks in. So when I fill out my, um, my weekly, which is, I'm using the um, daily number 13, just like everybody else who got the sample pack. Um, I'll pull that up. All right. So on the daily number 13, you have this really handy uh, week at a glance page, right? You've got um, a spot at the top for your projects. You've got uh, the Monday through Sunday, which I use for my dinner planning. And then you've got a habit tracker and the uh, calendar spread here at the bottom. So the way that I'm using this one is at the top, I'm writing whatever big projects have to be done this week. So it might be designing a subscription box. It might be preparing for cyber week. They're really big things. There we go, that light's better. And then I plan my dinners because I need to know what I'm feeding my family. Um, and then the habits here, I put down the things that I do every single day. So that might be for me like um, emptying the dishwasher or uh, making sure my children brush their teeth because I have two small boys and that's a struggle. Um, things that I, I want to write down once and then just be able to check off throughout the week. That's how I fill out these. They don't have to be for me, any specific order. They don't have to be only one category. It's a jumble. It could have physical health stuff. It could have family stuff. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter to me as long as it's something I would want to write every day. This saves me time throughout the week because then I don't have to write it every day. I've even used this space for um, weight tracking. When I'm trying to drop a couple pounds, I'll write my weight each day on that, um, on, in the little habit tracker spaces. So you can really flex that space however you like, but the purpose of a habit tracker is just to, um, just to keep those tasks that you, you would do every day from having to be rewritten every single day. It's to save you time. Um, and then at the bottom here, so this little weekly space, I am finding genius. Uh, I, I'm putting my big projects on here, things that have big deadlines, like when I go live, that'll be written here. Um, but I'm also using this as an alternate calendar. And what I mean by that is uh, each week, whatever my main focus of the week is, some weeks that's my physical health, some weeks that's our marketing. Um, I'm using this to write those out and see a visual plan for the week. I think that that's a really uh, creative way to use this space as a secondary calendar. And then let's say um, like today, Today we went and we were doing this master plan Monday. I would write that on the Monday box. And then on my daily calendar, I'll separate out the tasks that it takes to pull off a master plan Monday. Um, I'm using it just kind of as a bonus, bonus calendar spread where I can see everything all at once. Um, this week, my current one is about marketing, but last week it was about physical health where I wanted to eat better and be more active, things like that. Um, so in my, in my daily spreads, Chicken. These will work. These ideas work with pretty much any weekly, any daily. I'm using these, but depending on what we're designing, I might change. I usually change most of my planner every quarter. And yes, I have the copper discs. Very pretty. All right. Um, so on here, I will write my appointments. Like I said, when I get to that week, I'll write them out for the whole week. So uh, if I have a, a Zoom meeting, I'll write that down. I write the lives, I write anything down that's time sensitive. I write that out a week ahead. And that way I can see what's going on. If somebody asks to book some time on my schedule, I just flip to that day. Um, unless it's Monday, the only tasks that are on my daily are ones that are actually due that day. So if there's something that I'm not going to touch until Tuesday and then it has to be done Tuesday, then it goes only on Tuesday. Um, everything else goes on Monday. And my Monday is usually really full and sometimes it even comes down into the notes section. And then what I do is every Monday night, well, every night really, I migrate all my tasks to the next day so that I never forget a task. Um, and so far, that's been working really well for me for like the last seven years to do the same process. Um, I migrate my tasks nightly and I move them over. 
If there's a project that's coming up and you're worried about not remembering all the tasks, fill out a task list for it or a project page. We have the flex notes um, and keep that with your month that that project is going to be. So if I have something big coming up, um, like a sale in spring or something like that, I'll fill out a project page and I'll actually put that in the monthly calendar that that project is going to be. So if we're having a sale in March, um, then I'll put that planning page in the March monthly. I'll put it right there with it so I don't lose it. I don't keep a separate section for, for projects because I'll forget that they exist. Um, we'll come up to March and I won't remember that I had planned this all out. I'm very busy. And so that keeps me from having um, having to keep all those extra sections. If it's something related to a certain certain month, I put it in that month. If it's something related to a certain week, I put it in that week. Sometimes I'll have multiple note pages on a, in a daily spread. So like here's here's Monday and Tuesday, right? If I had three meetings in between Monday and Tuesday, my meeting note pages would be right here. When I'm done with them, like, for archival purposes, if I'm done with my, my meeting page or my projects page, then I'll move it to that category um, in my planner. But I don't, um, I don't do that to start because then I can't find them later. I put them exactly where they're supposed to be so that I have them that day when I need it. That also keeps me when I'm on this day from having to flip back and forth. Um, I can keep that one spread open for the day and that seems to work really well for me. Uh, let's see. I have the same monthly, I believe, with the column that says this week to the left, but not sure how to utilize that in the best way. So um, yes, on my my monthly here, um, man, this one's pretty filled out already for December. I have that this week column. That's what she's talking about. So when I get to December, um, this is December. I'm going to go through and I'm going to think about what my most important project or task thing thing that I'm working on, my focus for that week, and that's what I'm going to put there. So if we're launching a new product, if, um, if we're taking a vacation as a family, um, if the kids have a tournament because they're in karate, I'll write that on that week so I know that everything else needs to work up to that one main focus. That's how I use that space. Um, I use it as kind of a focus for the week, whatever's the most important thing. Uh, Linda, the problem I have is putting too many tasks on one day and then having to migrate too many tasks. So I, uh, I will migrate all of them. I know, I know it sounds like a lot to have to migrate like 30 tasks, but usually by Friday, um, even though I've added tasks throughout the week, my, um, my task list gets smaller. It's really rewarding. I'm pretty sure there's some sort of dopamine hit going on in my brain as I check off tasks. And that's really enjoyable that I get to watch that task list get smaller. The other thing that works really well for me, because I'm one of those people that um, likes to wait till the last minute to do a task when it's due. Um, if I get annoyed moving the same task over and over and again, I'll just do it just so I don't have to move it again. Um, and sometimes that's the only way I can get myself to actually do the thing I don't want to do. So. Um, for me, Linda, I really enjoy moving those tasks because it keeps me accountable. What's still on my plate, what's not on my plate. And then the thing is, if you look at a task and you've moved it so many times, you have permission to decide you don't want to do it. Even if you've moved it 45 days in a row, if it's something that isn't important and you don't really care if it gets done because that's what happens with those migrated tasks, just delete it. It probably isn't that important, otherwise you would have done it already. Um, or make somebody else do it if you can. Um, I have my two small boys, so sometimes there's cleaning or things like that that I'll move. I'm like, no, my kids can move the laundry today, right? So it doesn't have to be an employee. Um, but that's why I migrate them, because if I don't, I will forget them. I've had all sorts of different systems over the years. Um, and I've had where I keep all my tasks in one section in my planner. I keep all the different um, projects in a different section in my planner. And uh, it's never quite worked out well for me because I don't wanna have to flip back and forth to find everything. I'm too busy throughout the day to dig through my planner like that. So putting it all on my daily um, really, really works for me. So today is Monday morning. I have not filled out my daily for the day yet. Um, I do have whatever was um, 
already on it, right? Make sure I can, yeah, why not? Um, so this is how my Monday looks before I migrate my tasks. Um, and then I already have um, a note page there for projects that we're working on this week. And then of course, the other day. So you can see how I add, uh, I add extra pages in between. Um, and then I'll flip back so you can see where I ended up on um, Saturday because I did not touch my planner, um, my daily page in my planner yesterday. Um, I've just been working from my Saturday task list. So this is what Saturday looks like. So everything I've checked off on Saturday will um, disappear like it stays here. And then anything that's not checked off, I'll draw an arrow and move it to today. And that way I never forget a task. Um, and like I said, this system has been working really, really well. Um, I like have having a page for lists to refer to and then grab those items and assign to a day of the week. So yeah, that's kind of like having um, having a weekly task list, I imagine, is probably similar to what you're doing. Do you keep them, Tina, organized by due date or is it just kind of a master task dump section in your planner? I'd love to know more about that. Um, Tina's a wonderful planner woman, so she probably has a lot of advice too to give. Um, all right, so when we're talking about customization, um, oh, hold on, let's stay on the same topic. I love the idea of putting notes pages between the days. Do you find that you will use that to take notes if you need to jot any, for example, from a phone call? So yes, if I already have a note page, I'll go ahead and fill it out. If I don't and I need one, I'll move a note page to the space between my dailies. Um, and that way I don't have, I don't lose anything. I like keeping um, stuff together by date because I can easily look back and go, oh, I know that that was Monday or I know that that was that week. And then I flip through and I can find those pages. Um, at the end, once I'm done with that week, um, I do pull them out of my planner. I don't keep, like right now, I haven't finished migrating. So I have last week in there, but that's it on, on terms of dailies and weeklies. They don't stay in here. And once I'm done with my monthly, I pull that out too. I don't keep old calendars in my planner. I take them. I take anything that's important from them and I write them on future months. I write them in a reference section I have in my planner if it's something I need to just keep a note or um whatnot. And then I take them out and I put them in my archival planner. I don't keep them here to distract me. And that also frees up more room because there's always something else I want to add to my planner and um, we need room on our disks. Um, Tina says, it's really more of a dump area to clear out my brain. So yeah, I think that's a great idea, especially if you have a lot going on. Um, I firmly believe in scheduling tasks. Uh, as soon as you know what deadline they are, they need to get scheduled somewhere. Um, if there are things that don't really have a deadline, I call those a maybe list um, or a someday list. And I think that, that um, having that in your planner, I have probably have several, several of those right now. Um, this is my someday list with notes on each project and things. Um, and then these are the someday inserts that are from our website. Um, it has like a rough deadline, like this top one says December 2023. So that when I go through and I fill out my calendars, I can look and see um, see what I wanted to work on. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but if it was super duper important that it get done by a certain date, it wouldn't go on a someday or maybe list. It would go um, directly in my planner. So these are things that I can choose to work on, not necessarily things that are um, that are necessary. Let's see, Herlene. I use a bright colored piece of paper with a running to-do list. I move it along with along the rings and cross off and add to it. The specific dated page gets date specific items there. Okay, so she does. She keeps a running to-do list. Um, I have tried to do a running to-do list, but it stresses me out to see all of the crossed off stuff. So I like a fresh task list every day. I think it depends on, on the way that your brain works. If you, if you find clutter um, distracting like I do, I have a really hard time when my planner's covered in notes and scribbles and things, um, then, it, then rewriting it every day might work for you. If you don't want to rewrite it every day, then absolutely. Um, that's where if you don't need to rewrite it every day, we have some great weekly inserts where you would just write it one time and then be done with it. I actually think the, um, I think it's the weekly number six has a really large, tall task list, and it's just one list for the whole week. I think weekly number five also 
has one of those, and that would be really great if you don't want to rewrite your tasks and you um, can fit them all there. Something like that where you can just cross them off throughout the week. Um, so, like I said, for me, it doesn't really work because if I see all of that, I lose focus on what was important. If I'm having a really rough task day, um, as far as like there's just so much going on, I'll do like I did here on um, Friday, Saturday, um, I'll highlight my most important tasks. And I highlight three at a time. Once I've done those three, I check them off. Um, and then uh, I'll highlight the next three. Um, and that lets me only focus on those three tasks for a little bit. I have the same problem of having too many things on my to-do list. I need to be more careful of what I put on it every day. I'm too ambitious. So something I do when I'm filling out my page every single day is I'll look at it and I'll go, does this need to be done tomorrow? If it doesn't need to be done tomorrow and tomorrow is super busy, I'll move it to Tuesday or Wednesday. I'll move it a day ahead and give myself already that extra day of gap. If it's not super important and you know you have a crazy day, go ahead and schedule it for another day over. Um, you didn't lose the task. You'll still remember to do it. It just suddenly is not as important. Um, I have to, trouble deciding if a task should be on my daily or on a different list. It doesn't need to be done today necessarily, but I'm afraid I'll forget it or not see my alternate list. Any ideas? So um, it depends on what spread you're using. If you're using something that has a good task space, like this, this daily 13 does or our daily 12, something with a big long list, you could separate it out automatically. Tasks at the top are really important, must be done today. Tasks at the bottom are a do not forget list. And that way, if you have extra time, you already know where your priorities lie and you just migrate day to day. Um, I personally cannot remember to check um, a separate task list. I just cannot. I have so much going on. If it's not on my dailies, it's just not going to get done. I have my one routine every month where I fill out my monthly and I move those tasks. But outside of that, everything is on my daily because I cannot, um, I can't remember to go look at them. Um, so you have to figure out a way to work within what you do and how your brain works because nobody's the same. We all have different lives. We're all busy usually, but that's about the end of it. So what works for me may not work for you, but you feel free to separate that way. Um, I typically on my daily, if there's something that's related to my evening at home and has nothing to do with work, I'll write that already on the bottom of my task list, like near the bottom lines. And that way I know this doesn't have to be done till I get home. And so usually there's four or five blank lines in between my work tasks and my home tasks. And that way I can see, um, that way I can see very clearly, oh, take the trash out, but I don't have to worry about that until later tonight. Um, things that have deadlines go into my monthly. I need the monthly for an over, overall look at the month. I like to create lists for monthly things that need to be done in that month, but no particular day. Yep, exactly. That I think that that task list that comes on most of our monthlies is an excellent place for things like that. Um, if it's not super specific to one day, um, but you know it needs to be done in August, then fill it out in August. And then when you actually get to August, you can start scheduling that out on the smaller tasks, on the, on the weeklies and the dailies. Um, do you combine both personal and work on the same weekly and daily? Absolutely. Um, I have no choice. My work is life and life is work and um, it just is. So I will write all of my appointments, whether they're home or personal, I will write them all on the same schedule. Um, I typically separate out my personal tasks, like I said, so that they're at the bottom of my task list, except for on the weekends. On the weekends, uh, my personal tasks just get mingled because I don't have a lot of work tasks on the weekends usually. Um, and I just do that so I have a visual breaker. You could, if if you still need more separation, you could always highlight um, the lines. Um, highlight before you write, that way you don't smear anything. Um, you could highlight the lines that you want to use for personal, um, and that way you can see the difference. Um, you could color code your, your day as well. You could highlight you like your personal appointments if there's things you need to know like that. Um, I also like to block out chunks on my schedule. So if I'm having a really busy day, I might block out like two to four work on projects. And um, I'll block that out with a color or washi tape, something something that I can visually see this is what I want to do. Um, so hopefully that helps. Uh, 
Then I look at the monthly list at the beginning of each week and see what I can fit into that week. Yep, so Jutine is super organized. Um, I like the idea of splitting must do and need to be done this week. Um, we have, I'm trying to remember what layout it is. We have some layouts, um, weekly layouts that have three task lists. And the reason that we did three is many, many moons ago, I want to say five, five years ago, I actually put headers on there that was like, must do, should do, want to do kind of thing. I don't know if anybody remembers that. Um, I can't remember what they said. But the idea was, if you already know that certain tasks are your your most important for the week, you go ahead and write those on the first task list. If they're slightly less important, you put them on the second task list. And if they're just things you don't want to forget, they go on the third task list. And that was really nice for me when we weren't so busy. I used that one pretty consistently for a couple of years. Um, because there are obvious tasks that you know are extremely important and that way you don't have to get them muddled and every day you can look and see what your most important tasks still left over are. I also like the idea of on those three column task lists of migrating tasks around. So maybe um, you've done all of your most important tasks. I still think that it it's a good idea to then pick one or two from the next task list over and move it over. Now this is important to me. Um, you can rewrite as many times as you want in your planner. I color code mine with dots. Blue is work and pink is personal and black is uh, can do any time. Very good. Good job, Lisa. Um, we, we really like the color dots here. Um, Linda sent me a whole batch of them. Wait, this way. You can see them in my cup on my shelf. The color dots are, um, the color dots are really nice. Um, I like the friction highlighters too, because the friction highlighters can be erased. Um, I have a hard time re-highlighting over those, so it depends on what I'm trying to do. Um, but I think color coding is a great way to customize the space so that you can visually find what you're looking for. Um, I do the same thing you do, Jane. I create personal to-do lists and separate work to-do lists on my daily. I like having it all in my face for the day. It has to be all in my face. Um, I have... I don't know, eight people begging for my attention throughout the day here at work. And then I go home and I've got the kids and all the things. And it's just too much for me to flip around um, and try to find what I'm looking for. So everything goes in one clean spot. Um, so um, if you're talking about customization, um, there's a couple different things that I've done over the years. If I'm super busy and I have a lot of things that need to go on my habit tracker, um, I'll write, I'm looking to see if I have one already filled out that way. Um, yes. So, um, like I said, I haven't finished filling out my pages for this week like I'd like. Uh, let's get a blank one. That way I can show you exactly what I would do. All right. So I'll just draw a line there so you can see. See this line on my habit tracker? If I have a lot of habits... Um, I might separate out ones that I have to do twice a day with a line so that the top chunk is the morning and the bottom chunk is the evening. And that way I can say like make boys brush teeth and I have two spots to do that because they're supposed to do it twice a day and it only takes up one line. So that's a way that I customize our layouts to make them more functional. Um, I've been known to draw a line down the meal section and um, I'll do that real quick so you can see what that would look like. Bear with my... I would normally do this with a page finder, um, so it's nice and neat. Um, I'll draw a line like that, and that way I have a spot to log my weight each day. It's something that um, I like to keep track of, and so I can have it right there next to my dinner plans. I'm not going to plan uh, a four-course meal if I know I'm trying to lose weight that week, and so that's something I'll do to customize my layout. Um, what else? Uh, when I'm Tracking my physical health or my mental health, I'll write, um, I'll draw separate lines on this weekly here at the bottom. I might highlight a line so it looks like a separate space. Um, let me see if I have, I do. Okay, I got all the tools here. So, um, right, so I'll take my highlighter and my page finder here and just draw a line. So if I'm trying to track something like my steps. Um, I do this a lot for like my steps or I'll do breakfast, lunch, dinner, and I'll do three separate colors. Um, this gives me just kind of a visual break. You do not have to use them exactly the way that we design them. They're meant to be flexible on purpose so that you can do things like this and 
um, make it work for you. So um, just an idea of what you can do. Um, we talked about separating out your task list uh, with color coding. You can move it top and bottom. I think that works really well. Um, so like at the bottom here, um, this is where I would write my personal tasks. I don't have a lot that I do at home every day that's super um, like time sensitive. So it might be like, you know, if one of my dogs is on medication, I might give them like give Stella medication or something like that. We'll go at the bottom. And then that leaves the whole bulk until I get to that point for work tasks, because that's where the majority of my tasks live. If your personal life is more busy if you have more tasks for your personal life than your work life, then maybe you want to flip that. So you want to put work tasks from the bottom up and your personal tasks down. And that way you save the bulk of the room for where you have the most. Um, you can do whatever works for you. Um, so the other thing that we did, which is really handy, on the um, hourly spots on a lot of our calendars, we left this kind of open and blank. Um, let me see if I can get that. So each one of these spots, there's a number there, but the rest of that spot around it kind of has its own like fake little box. I'll highlight that whole hour as in this hour is for this project, or I'll highlight several hours and I'll highlight the tasks or the times down. So like if I know, um, if I know I'm working on the same project for all of those, I'll do something like that. So I can still um, cleanly see my writing. I don't have to worry about writing over um, the highlighter. And so I'll do that a lot too. Um, the same way that I separate out my work and personal stuff on my daily, I do that on my monthly as well. I put the personal things towards the bottom of my monthly boxes and I put the work things um, towards the top. So you have to find a system that works for you. Um, once you figure out something that works, you kind of just keep hanging on to that. You need to have um, time to live in this new process and you can add to it and change it over time. But if it works, don't make big shifts because that's special in itself. Um, maybe you make a small modification the next week to make it slightly more functional, but don't scrap the whole thing if you find something that works for you. All right. Um, so we talked about different ways to customize your layouts. Um, we talked about the monthly, weekly, daily that I like to um, layer those on. Um, what else would you like to talk about today? Um, you know, the other thing, we didn't talk about washi tape or stickers, but I highly recommend if your spread is, um, is too empty and that bothers you, you can totally fill it out with stickers and fill that page up. I think that, um, I think that's a good use for it. If I use a bunch of stickers because my days, um, my days usually look like this one. Um, if I use any kind of decorative stuff, I get that visual clutter and I start to go into um, paralysis mode where I have a hard time figuring out what's important. So for me, um, I cannot decorate my spreads. But if you have um, the big open spreads where there are not a lot of tasks, I think that that's a great use for that empty space and you get to be creative. Um, I used to really love decorating my planner when we didn't have a lot going on. Um, and so that's a good way to, to make it your own, too, that has nothing to do with whether or not you're busy. Um, what else? So we talked about adding the, um, the note page in between your days or in between your weeks. We actually give you um, a blank, pretty much blank page on the back of your monthly so that you can add extra things in between your month and your week as well. Um, let me find one that's still pretty blank because I'm going to get in trouble if I show you that one. There we go. All right. So this is the back of that lined monthly and then the start of my week. If I have a bunch of projects, I'll go ahead and put them right here behind that week. Um, if there's goals or things that I'm doing, I'll put them right here so that they're in between um, the month and week there. So I really like this new daily because each week is a completely separate entity. So like I can pull just this chunk out and that's a whole week. Um, but that lets me actually put note pages and things in between each week as I'm planning. So I don't have to keep all of my stuff with my monthly like I used to. Um, a lot of our weeklies run back to back throughout the month. And so you don't really have that opportunity. Um, you could put note pages in between the two, um, in, the, in between the like 
um, the week. So if you've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on one page and Thursday on on the second page, you could put it between Wednesday and Thursday. Um, Let's see, we've got comments. Uh, this has been amazing, thank you. I really appreciate you going through and explaining how you plan with the different layouts. Um, I may have missed this, but do you fill out your dailies at the beginning of each week or each daily the night before? So I do a general filling out um, the week of. So generally Sunday night, um, I'll fill out anything that was on my weekly plan onto my dailies. Sometimes I'll do two weeks ahead on my dailies. It just depends on how busy I know we're gonna be and how much planning I need to do. So I might have like my, my schedule and some really basic tasks written out for the next week or two. And then when I get to that day, usually the night before or the morning of, I will fill out um, my full day with every task I wanna get done, I'll migrate tasks from the day before. Um, and I'll add new ones if I've thought of something that I had forgotten, I'll go ahead and add those. Um, and so, it's just you have, even if this is the way that I use it, you may find that your brain works a little differently and you need to change it and that's totally okay. That's the whole purpose of today is finding a way that works for you and figuring out um, how to continue to improve on that until you find something that's perfect for you. This system works really well for me. And so even when I'm on a different layout, I know I'm gonna be doing it the exact same way. Um, the other thing that I do, so I'll color code um, rarely. I'm not super big in the color coding. I might use one color for the day. Again, that visual clutter is really hard for me. Um, and so if I'm using pink that day, that's the only highlighter I use for that entire day so that I only have one color on there. But what I do a lot of is the symbols. Um, on our previous version of this one, on the daily 13, we actually gave you a little uh, symbol key. Um, but I use symbols to designate what's going on with different tasks. Um, if I've delegated a task, I'll circle the task box. If I've started it, I'll put a dot. If I've done it, um, I'll check it off. Uh, if I've migrated it, I'll put an arrow. That way, if I keep the same system every week, I can look at a glance and know exactly what's going on, what happened with that task. Oh, I didn't do it, I moved it to the next day. Then I can look at the next day and find out what happened to it then. Um, you have to find a system that works the way that you need it to work. And that doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to work for you. This is your planner. This is your personal planner. It does not have to be pretty for anybody else. It just has to work for your week. Um, the other thing, um, we've talked a few times about brain dumps. Um, Tina and I kind of touched on it there a little bit. If you don't know what needs to be done, I highly recommend doing a brain dump. I typically do one every two to three weeks, sometimes more, it just depends on how chaotic things get. We're all sit down for however long it takes, usually at least 15 minutes, and I will write down everything I can think of, every single thing I can think of that's on my task list, any projects that I've got going on, and it, that is the ugliest piece of paper when I'm done with it. But then I'll take those tasks and I'll schedule them out. And there's nothing like uh, remembering something like, let's say, um, for instance, if my son's birthday is coming up, right? I, my, my youngest, he's, he was born right after Halloween. Um, when we get into November, it's crazy here. So if I don't go through and remember all of these things ahead of time, I'm going to feel really guilty and I'm going to feel bad that I forgot to buy him gifts or I forgot to plan his party or whatever thing it is. And so I'll go through and I'll do a brain dump. What's going on in November that I need to remember? And I'll look at my calendars and I'll write it all down. I actually really like doing a brain dump, not in my planner, um, meaning that I might pull the pages out and set them aside or I'll use a separate notebook. That way I can flip through my planner as I'm doing it. It's not just me sitting there, you know, um, looking up at the stars and thinking. I, I'm actually looking for tasks and projects that I've forgotten. It's an active process. It is so helpful if you don't know what needs to be done. I highly recommend it. And then you schedule those out. Don't, don't write them somewhere random where you're going to forget that they need to get done. Put them in the month where you want to do them or on the week. If you know what week they need to be done, schedule them all out. Um. Some great ideas. My planner sometimes as scrambled as my brain can be. Um, you know, sometimes um, sometimes scrambled is okay. 
I think it just depends on what that looks like for you. Uh, I know if somebody else looks at my planner, they compliment my handwriting, but they don't understand at all what's going on because I abbreviate and I use symbols and who knows, but it works for me. So um, as long as you know what needs to be done, then don't worry about what it looks like. Um, as far as uh, keeping, um, keeping all of your tasks written out, um, the other thing, I will say is if it's something you know you have to do automatically, either write it on a habit tracker or don't write it at all. You do not need to write down that you're going to do the dishes because eventually you're going to run out of spoons and your brain's going to remind you, I need to do the dishes. So if that stresses you out to have a lot of things written down, you don't have to write the tasks you're going to remember anyway. I do not have to write down that I have to feed the dogs because they're going to be over at me wagging their tails and licking me until I feed them, right? So I don't write down, do I need to feed the dogs? I will remember or they will remind me. Um, so kind of think about that, too, as you've got these really long task lists. Do all of those things actually need to be on a task list or are some of them automatic? Um, let's see, Celia. Could you talk about different tab sections you have in the next vid to have in the next video? I'm really struggling to limit the amount of tabs I need. Um, I mean, tabs are a really personal topic to each person, but we could definitely talk about um, what types of tabs you might need and help you um, structure that. Um, I think that would be a great idea, Celia. Um, one thing to remember is self-love, no perfectionism, accept and positive talk to yourself. Absolutely. Like I said, does not have to be pretty. Do not, you do not have to care if it's pretty. Um, sometimes I'll fill out like my entire monthly really messy because I'm planning ahead. Um, I mean, they're not always pretty. Sometimes I'll just scribble all the way across the, um, across the box diagonally. And when I get to that month, I'll erase it and rewrite it. As long as it's in my planner, it's not hurting anybody. Um, and that's, that's what I like to do. Uh, if there's something that you need to remember each week, but don't necessarily have to check it off, it's just a reminder. Like, um, for instance, trash day on Thursdays. You could put that on a, on a sticker on a page finder or a hybrid page finder. Um, you could put that somewhere else so that you move it every time and you see it, but you don't have to write it down. Um, that's another another thing that I'll do is if it's something going on, maybe um, I need to keep track of a certain project, but I don't necessarily have tasks for it yet. I'll just write the project's name on a sticky note and stick it right to my, my page finder. And that way I just keep it top of mind that this is what I'm working on. So hopefully some of this was helpful. Like I said, it's not super structured. This is the first time we're doing a master plan Monday, um, but I know that there were there have been a lot of questions about how to plan, actually plan on the pages. So hopefully I gave you some useful ideas. Um, I do know um, next week there's um, goal planning that I wanted to talk about. So maybe we can do some, some talk about tabs, Celia, and talk about how to goal plan in your planner. Um, and then, of course, we will be live Thursday as well, Thursday at 1 p.m. MST. I'm going to be giving you uh, more sneak peeks for Cyber Week. I have more to show you, um, and I think you're going to like it. So make sure to come back for that. I'm trying to keep the Monday session more about um, training, thing, asking questions, things that you want to know, and Thursday will be more about showing you all the pretty products. <laughs> Masterclass with Jane. <laughs> um, you know, eventually it'll get to where you guys are planning um, – all at fours and fives and you won't um you may not want to be live maybe we want to zoom and you want to show off how pretty your planner is uh, i'm totally down we did ask and the majority of people wanted um wanted it to be live instead of zoom so here i am um, if we change our minds you all let me know and i will i will do what we need to do otherwise it is 8 52 and um, I have our team meeting at 9.05, which gives me enough time to refill my coffee and say good morning to the people that have walked in. I can hear them all behind me. Uh, and thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if, you, if you're new to Jane's Agenda, feel free to visit us at janesagenda.com to see what we've got. And um, you can also visit our blog. Um, almost all the blogs were, were written by me, and so they're the same kind of topics, maybe a little bit more structure than what I did today. Uh, almost all of them have freebies, things to download to make the um, training in the blog more useful. So um, hopefully, hopefully you find whatever you need there. If not, give me a comment on social media, and just like Celia did, she asked for what she needs to know, and we're going to try to squeeze that in.
All right. Thank you, everybody. I hope you have a great week. I'll see you Thursday.